start anywhere. It's wicked. Information at your fingertips is par for the course these days. A wonderful new initiative, the Heritage Collection, is just like your local Wikipedia. Debbie Duncan and Chris Dempsey join me now on the couch. How did it come about, Debbie? Okay. I'm the library manager at Upper Hutt City Library and this is a really exciting initiative for us. Mm. We've been collecting local heritage for quite a number of years and obviously in recent years we've used technology to digitise it, to make it more accessible for people, to be able to view images and to be able to get access to them. But up until recently our previous database was fairly static. Um, we'd, we, you could see digital images but unless we had the information on who was in them or where they were, there wasn't a, really a lot around them. Um, so we really needed to capture the stories of behind those a lot of those images. And this is where um, Chris from New Zealand Micrographics yeah. came in. These guys have been fantastic. Um, when I said to them, oh, you know, our current database is OK, but it really doesn't deliver what we want. Yeah. We've got oral histories that you can't listen to. We've got a lot of that sort of information. So, basically, Micrographics said, yeah, we could do something around that. Yeah. So, so, so Recollect came up. Yeah. <laughs> so how does it work, Chris? It's, it's a different take on, uh, on an old horse. So yeah. um, uh, there's a, a lot of um, uh, heritage-type systems out there showing photos and, and supplying information. Yeah. But uh, the way Recollect works, it actually takes um, those photos and offers them up to people to allow them to add their own information in. Yeah. And so people can put their own personal stories or they can um, add to that data. They can add the date the photo was taken or the people can be tagged inside the photo. So Can, can people add to those photos? Absolutely. Cause, cause you, you initially, when you found your own family in there, I found my own family. I was searching through data, looking for keywords, you know, yeah. early early stages, looking for dogs and cats and bridges yeah. and things like that. And my wife said to me, oh, you should search for your family. And I did. And my parents' wedding photos popped up within the collection. And there was so little data it was actually with those photos. It said Kelly Dempsey wedding, and that was about it. Rebel Jackson was the photographer. So I was able to add a date when the photos were taken. I was able to geotag the locations of those photos. I was able to tag all the people in those photos. Data that would never have been in the collection. And how have the photos kind of been compiled? You know, where have they all come from originally? Or have they just always been in the stockpile? Well, they've come from a number of different sources. We have, um, for instance, some of the businesses that used to be um, large in the valley, for instance, General Motors, Hazelwoods, we've got a lot of their records. And we've got things like photographs of their social functions. Hazelwoods? Yep. Yeah. So we have a lot of that sort of information and the Revel Jackson collection that Chris was just talking about yes. is, is huge. Um, Revel Jackson was a society photographer uh, working in Upper Hutt and very active in the 60s, 70s and 80s. And he f photographed basically weddings, engagements, 21st, civic balls, Christmas parades, anything of a community nature, he took photos of it. And we've been very, very lucky that his family have donated his photographs and negatives I to us. I can't believe how many photos, more than 15,000? Yes. That's yeah. fantastic. And many, many more still to digitise. Oh my gosh. Mm. And, and amazing tool because you go in and you can type in whatever you're, you you're thinking of and, like. and, and it'll pop up. Um, and I, I, I'm sure it'll mean that other people will start bringing more material towards you because they'll, they'll have things to support it, won't they? Mm. Absolutely. And one of the benefits of this is that if people don't want to give us their material, which in some cases is, is perfectly actually the best thing because yeah. we don't have a lot of storage, they may come along with their photos, their documents, whatever. We can help them scan it. We can get the digital images onto the website and they can take their precious mm. Take things home. home. Yep. It's great for school projects. I was just thinking, oh. where would you use it for the wee ones? And if they want to go along and just dip in there and uh, help their uh, Especially for, because you are a local community uh, within much. Wellington, mm. and it, you know, it, it's like the storage box of, of all your history. Mm. And, and one of the things that makes it really, really precious um, for our community is that the library is actually the only place that holds this material. Mm -hmm. We don't have a local historical society. Mm -hmm. And we've got many groups that are interested in heritage, um, but they tend to be focused around a particular building or subject rather than the broad brush. So if we don't have it, there's the potential to lose it. That's mm -hmm. what's crucial. And, and that is the thing, you know, like mm -hmm. in history, we, we see time and time again, things get lost and yeah. this this is a tool to keep the the story being told, isn't it? Mm. Absolutely. But it also allows 
um, uh, a lot of our older generation who were, who were in these photos who aren't tech savvy. They, mm -hmm. they, they don't know how to drive their remote controls or alone drive a computer. So the, the, the children, the grandchildren can be coming along with their, their iPads or whatever tool and can get granny to sit down and describe the photos and tell those stories and things. And so we'll be able to start recording straight onto the website their personal stories. Yeah, well, you, you did that with your family, didn't you? It, it started uh, so, with you and yep. just spread. <laughs> it, it just I just want to know how big it's going to get. Is it going to get so big? There is, a, there is that potential, um, but does it matter? No, it doesn't. No, and you know what? Every local regional Absolutely. library should be doing this because it's a great idea. Well, great for you, tool. for the techie geek, that, that could be a <laughs> money <laughs> spinner, couldn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. I'm, I'm quite altruistic, so I yes. see this sort of thing um, being such a, a benefit to the communities yeah. that um, uh, and. The, the tying together of these communities and, and their resources, mm. the local experts in the various mm. things is, is very, very important. And, and one of the key things too is it's not just about capturing the old history. Um, having this tool means that we can capture what's happening today yeah. because today's stories are tomorrow's, tomorrow's history. history. Very nice. And it is so important that we don't lose that. Mm. Thanks, guys, for coming on the show. It's really Thank cool. Thank you so much. And if you want to check out more about this, go to www.uhcl.recollect.co.nz. After the break, Rex Morgan is in the kitchen making a flash macaroni cheese with ham and tomato and cheese. Oh, just everything. Oh, macaroni's good old. Good on you, Rex. Ones.